What's going on YouTube? My name's Anton. Welcome to the channel. Today I will be reviewing The Last of the Starks. Guys, if you're new to the channel, we cover any and everything Game of Thrones, from the books to the show and even the prequel series set for next year. So if you're a huge fan like we are, you should consider subscribing. Now this is a fairly new channel and we are still working some things out. We are currently looking for a new name. So if you guys have any suggestions, let us know in the comments section. And if we pick yours, we'll give you a shout out for the next couple weeks. Now we gotta start somewhere, so the like goal for this video is gonna be 100. So please make sure you smash that like button to show your love and support. Alright guys, this is a spoiler warning, so if you haven't watched the episode, go watch it and then come back and join us then. So we are now just two episodes away from finding out who wins the throne. I personally am not looking forward to a life with no Game of Thrones, but life goes on and we do have the Long Night prequel series to look forward to. And from the way they are being so stingy with the Night King information, I believe this will be a big part of the show. So I'm disappointed we won't get any now, but in a way this may be for the better. There are so many storylines getting wrapped up, and seeing how those stories are getting wrapped up in this short time, I don't think we would have been satisfied with anything we got anyway. Hopefully they will take their time and present it the right way. This was my biggest problem with the episode. I just can't get over it. I can't move on. It seems like everyone moved on from the battle like it was just a regular walk in the park. But I digress. The episode starts off with a really cool moment where Sansa pins a Stark emblem onto Theon. So far Theon's story arc has been the best of the season to me. I loved how they ended his story. Jorah's as well, but I just can't help but feeling bad for the man. He did everything he could for Danny, but she just couldn't love him back the way he loved her and it broke his heart many of times. I kinda knew this was coming, but when Lyanna died, I thought for a second he could have a happy ending and maybe be the Lord of House Mormont. We then get to see Ghost, who is pretty badly banged up. I hated what they did with him this episode, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Then we get to see John give a really king-worthy speech and we see just how many we lost in the battle, which to be honest with you, I thought would have been a little bit higher. After that we cut to the Great Hall, where they're celebrating their victory. Here Danny awards Gendry Storm End and it rubs Sansa the wrong way. I personally don't see the harm here. She's rewarding someone who deserves it and gaining a loyal supporter at the same time. Sansa is just hating because she didn't think of it. Although Bronn would be pissed if he's seen how easy it was for Gendry to get a castle. But I loved how the playfulness of the scene turns very quickly when Danny, for a moment here, acts like her brother and gets jealous of Jon. Although she does have a right to be pissed, she has lost a dragon and half her army for the north and they show very little gratitude at all. Also, did anyone else notice Pod drank to being a virgin? Like what in the world did he do to those girls? The Hound is his usual unpleasant self, but I can't wait for Clegane Bowl next week. Next we get an interaction with Sansa and the Hound. I really love this. It shows just how much Sansa has grown since she left for King's Landing all those years ago. She really has become a Littlefinger 2.0. I feel like there is more we will learn about Bran, I just have no clue where they're going with it. He tells Tyrion he shouldn't envy him because he mostly lives in the past. What exactly does he mean by this? I feel like they've warned us so many times that if he stays in the past too long, he'll lose himself for a reason, and there's going to be a payoff for that. I'm just very interested where they go now that the Night King's gone. Which one of you cowards shit in my pants was the best line of the show. I will definitely miss Tormund. Next, the first act Gendry does as a Baratheon is get shot down by a Stark. How fitting. But I think she will come around personally, she just has unfinished business in King's Landing first. Then we get the Jamie scene. Now I didn't think this was ever going to work. Jamie has a child on the way, he can never forget that, thus never forgetting Cersei or getting over Cersei, until she was dead or both of them are. So unlike many, this was hard for me to watch because I knew she would just get hurt. Plus I wanted to see giant babies with Torben. Next we get the most important scene of the show where Danny tries to talk John into keeping his identity a secret. Now I said two weeks ago that we would tell a lot about where they were headed by Danny's reaction when she finds out. If she throws a tantrum, then I thought she would turn into the Mad Queen. 
And to me, this was kind of a tantrum. She has seen John not lie, even when it hurts him. Yet he is telling you he doesn't want the throne, and this just fuels all her choices from here on out, and it just leads her downfall because she just doesn't believe it. I told you I don't want it. It doesn't matter what you want. You didn't want to be king in the north. What happens when they demand you press your claim and take what is mine? I refuse. You are my queen. I don't know what else I can say. You can say nothing to anyone ever. Then we get to see that they have still half of all of their armies. I was pretty surprised that the Dothraki still have half of theirs, considering last episode we watched them getting annihilated. But, okay. I do feel like she does have a traitor, I just don't know who, because Cersei just continues to get information, and I understand there's little birds in the north, but like in war councils and stuff like that, there's no way that those little birds could hear. So I'm kind of thinking Varys or someone else is betraying Danny, but there ha I, I just don't know who. Next, I feel like we get robbed here. When it looks like we're finally going to get to see Jon tell his sisters, they have Bran do it and then cut to a different scene. This was a cheap move. Then when Sansa can't swear right away, he should have definitely known Littlefinger 2.0 could not keep her mouth shut. She tells Tyrion like not even five minutes later and just starts a spiral of events from that. We then see Arya join the Hound on his way to King's Landing, but I'm a little worried about the comment she made. She says she doesn't plan on coming back. Now this could mean that she's about to do a suicide mission, or it could also mean that she plans on going to Storm's End when she's done. I personally hope it's the latter because I will not be able to hand, uh, handle Arya's death. Like, that's the one character that I will lose my ship. Nope. Nope. Don't want it. Pineapples. Pineapples. I don't like it. Here they pull another cheap stunt with Ghost. It makes no sense to me. Jon just gives him away. Now, unless he doesn't think he's coming back, but he still couldn't even pet him, which is it just made absolutely no sense. This was just to save money and didn't fit John's character at all. Hated this scene. We see a final goodbye with Sam and Gilly and find out she's pregnant. They never say, but I assume he goes back home. I mean, his father and brother are dead, so he is now Lord Tarly. Then we get Masande and Grey Worm holding hands. Now, they've been a little bit too happy as of late, so I knew something bad was coming. I just assumed it would be Grey Worm. So it was a really interesting twist that it wasn't. We'll get into a little bit more of that later, why I think that was a perfect move by Cersei. Okay, so here Tyrion and Varys have a conversation about betraying Danny and putting Jon on the throne. All I could think of during the scene is how much she could use Barriss and Selmy right now. I'm still not over his meaningless death, or Dario for that matter. She is surrounded by people who don't trust her. So later on, we get a scene where Varys is begging Danny not to attack King's Landing, and he gets shot down pretty hard. I think Varys meets his end next episode. I think he gets burned alive in front of Tyrion. This may persuade Tyrion that Jon is the better choice. I think we even see some of this during the sneak peek for next week's episode. Then we get Euron shooting and killing Rhaegal. Now this was a little bit of a shock to me, but I'm not as bothered by it as many fans are. Yes, in the books, there's no way you can kill a dragon mid-flight with arrows. I don't care how big. But in the show, they also don't have the horn that is said to control dragons, which I believe Euron has. So I feel like the same result could happen, but different ways. Besides, they're kind of damned if they do and damned if they don't. If they weren't to have killed any dragons, Danny would have basically wiped the floor with Cersei. And I don't think many of us want the final battle of Game of Thrones to be that one-sided. But Cersei's brilliance is overlooked here. On the first thought, taking Masande instead of somebody more useful for Danny would kind of been a mistake. But then when you think about it, she's trying to make Danny go crazy and be rash. If that's the case, this is the perfect target. Her last true friend, then she put her in chains to top it off. Man, 
But I knew as soon as they captured her, she was a goner. Okay, so then we get back to Winterfell. And they tell Jamie what Cersei has done. I don't think Jamie has regressed as far as we think. I believe he's actually going to try to save her for his child. And he clearly made a decision there. Stay and be happy and live out your days or go die with or for Cersei. I think when he sees she's willing to kill all those innocent people, he will become the Queen Slayer. She should have picked Tormund though. Just saying. The final scene, we are at the gates of King's Landing. Now, this made little sense to me, because if Cersei really wanted to, she could have killed Drogon and the Queen very easily right here. But instead, she just pisses her off by killing Missandei. I also think Tyrion just screwed her by letting Euron know that he knows she's pregnant. This should tell Euron that she's using him and that that's Jaime's baby. But at this point... He has kind of put all his eggs in one basket. I don't think Danny will even care if he turns on Cersei. I mean, he did just kill her baby, so he's kind of got to ride this one out. I think Jamie will kill him next week, although I'd like to see Danny get to do it now, or even Grey Worm. And the show ends with Masande getting beheaded and Danny looking pissed. That's going to do it for this week. Thanks again for watching. A special shout out goes to Tom Boone for helping me out this week. Hopefully we can bring you guys many, many more videos like this one. Also, another special shout out goes to the Facebook group, Game of Thrones and Walking Dead fans. If you're a fan of either show, I really suggest you check this group out. The administrator is really cool and interactive with the group. She tries to post all the new episodes. She even does giveaways and games throughout the week. I get most of my support from this group and it's filled with knowledgeable and diehard fans. So definitely check them out. Shout out to Tracy for making that group awesome. I'll leave a link in the description. But all right, guys, I'll catch up with you next Monday. Until then. What a say. I get wound up from the ground up. And I don't know who I turn the sound up. Drown the noise out. Swallow up. Don't cry. Got an anxious heart.